Hello, my name is Christine Gray and I'm a committee member of the Square Building Trust based in North Shields. This presentation is part of Local History Month. It's called Rediscovering Roland. It's about the remarkable man who established the Square Building Trust and who played a significant but not widely known role across the borough during his lifetime. Roland's early life and family. Roland Lishman was born in Levain Place in North Shields in March 1877, one of the eight children of John James and Jane Lishman. Roland first got married to Mary Riddell, who sadly died in 1912, just after the birth of their third child. He then married Mary Angus and they remained together for over 40 years. He had seven children in total, with four of them from his second marriage. The family enjoyed many holidays at Grisdale Lodge near Oldswater in the Lake District, which was a great passion of Rowland's throughout his life. They lived in various houses in North Shields, but most notably in Alma Place, and Rowland and Mary lived latterly in Spring Terrace. Rowland's career and Sir James Knott. Rowland's father John was a ship surveyor, and Rowland was destined to start his working life at the age of 14 as a shipping clerk, with a company run by William Johnson. This was based on Tyne Street in North Shields. Rowland later joined the Newcastle Gateshead-based establishment, Piri Hope and Company, rising to the post of Chief Cashier. He was later headhunted by Sir James Knott's Prince shipping line. Rowland became a lifelong business confidant and friend to Sir James after he uncovered the parties involved in an attempted takeover of the Prince line. He was also made executive trustee of the Knott Memorial Trust, which was set up in memory of Sir James's two sons, James and Basil, who were killed in World War I. The trust still operates today. His later career involved working for the Mickley Coal Company, and in the 1940s he represented local coal owners in the negotiations leading up to the nationalisation of the coal industry. At various times in his career, Rowland was also chair of the Newcastle and Gateshead Gas Company and Blythe Harbour Commission and a trustee of the Newcastle Savings Bank. He was also a local JP. Rowland and the Square Building Trust Rowland was an elder of the Northumberland Square Presbyterian Church, now St Columbus United Reformed Church, and was leader of the men's Bible class. A talk at the church on the appalling housing conditions in the borough at the time prompted immediate action in the setting up of the Square Building Trust in 1929. Incredibly, the subsequent fundraising campaign led by Rowland and driven by the men and women's Bible classes raised over £2,000 in one week selling shilling bricks. Rowland as builder. Within six months of the money being raised, the Trust had built its first affordable family homes. This was followed swiftly by the building of 48 one- and two-bedroomed flats on Howden Road in North Shields. The development, which employed many local tradesmen, was completed in 1936. It was ahead of its time due to the inclusion of a nursery school for tenants located between the two blocks. This brought national attention to the development, and Rowland hosted a visit to the nursery for the then Duke of Kent. The nursery school was later demolished, and in 1987, the Trust built in its place a small development called Henderson Court, which is still occupied today. So as an executive trustee of the St James Knott Foundation, Roland encouraged and advised Sir James to consider what kind of legacy he might wish to leave as he was nearing the end of his life in 1934. Instead of a statue, the development of Knott's flats was agreed as a lasting memorial to Sir James and was completed in 1938. It includes 135 flats and was primarily aimed at those working in the local seafaring industry and marine trades. It is now managed by a housing association. Roland and the YMCA Sir James was also commemorated by a building of a youth centre in North Shields named the Sir James Knott Memorial Hall, which alongside other nearby buildings became the Tynemouth, now North Shields, YMCA under Roland's supervision. Roland was very supportive of the YMCA movement and he served as Vice President of the National Council of YMCAs. He also personally purchased the Patterdale Hall estate in the Lake District in 1950 and immediately put it in trust for the YMCA. 
with the aim of providing affordable holiday accommodation for young people from urban areas who may not otherwise get a chance to enjoy the benefits of the countryside. Roland and Sport Despite being described as a sickly child at his birth, this didn't stop Roland from becoming an accomplished champion athlete, winning the Tyne Sculling Championships three times in his life. At the age of 23, at the age of 44 and remarkably at the age of 60. He also enjoyed hill climbing, especially in his beloved Lake District. He was very keen on football and helped set up the Square Presbyterian football team, which won many cups. In his late 70s, he could still be seen each week acting as a linesman. He also established the Square Sports Field on Preston Avenue by negotiating the rental of the land from the then Duke of Northumberland. The field had areas for various sports and also allotments for church members to grow their own vegetables, as Roland did himself in his own garden. Roland's Legacy Roland was mourned by many following his death in December 1958 at the age of 81. Over 600 people attended his funeral and there was much praise in the eulogy for his contribution to the town. The YMCA in North Shields today owes much to Roland's vision. The Square Building Trust celebrated its 90th anniversary in 2019 and continues to provide high-quality, affordable housing. Roland's son Colin was treasurer for many years before his death and a number of Roland's descendants keep a keen interest in the Trust. The Trust continues to meet in St Columba's Church in a room named after Roland and he is also remembered fondly by older members of the congregation. The full extent of the work of this quiet, modest man may never be known. As it is said, he gave away 90% of his income to good causes in the town, but much of it was done anonymously. Hopefully this short presentation will help make the contribution of this remarkable son of North Shields more widely known.